Electronica 2018 um, Electro and the Electronica Fast Forward do have a big booth, but so far um, we haven't seen any really big names in the industry, um, with one exception, and he's standing right beside me. Uh, a, a big man in terms of everybody should know his name, I think. Um, if you mention Raspberry Pi, the name that goes with is Evan Upton, um, co-founder, I think, Evan, if that's correct. And um, there's, there's, more, there's one more reason why we are surpri both surprised and pleased to have you around here at this show, because this is all professional stuff here at Electronica. It's in Germany, it's uh, Electronica, it's official. There are big names, big suppliers, and mighty names all over the place. Um, but RPI, Raspberry Pi, seems to come from a maker world, a creative world, a sparkling world. How come, Evan, it has actually made it to this whole, this, this place of professionalism? How did that come about? I think it's very straightforward. I think if you look back in time, if you look back six years to 2012, when we were selling our first million Raspberry Pi, we sold a million Raspberry Pi's in that first year. If you look at the demographics, you look at who, were, who was buying them, it was largely hobbyists. It was adult hobbyists. You know, kind of the, the education aspect of our, of our sales kind of came a little bit later. Now, you look at those, those, those hobbyists, a lot of them are professional engineers. We, we know that is exactly the yeah. case at the electron. Yeah, and that's what we... They are budding professionals. That's, that's right. And so what we found very quickly was that these people were taking Raspberry Pi, were A, finding Raspberry Pi to be a stable and performant and of course low cost platform, and that they were taking it with them into their professional lives. And the next time your boss asks you to solve a problem, it's natural. Of course, Arduino, Arduino did this long before we did. It's very natural for someone to reach for the things from their home life that they know work. And they, they are in a relaxed atmosphere within themselves. They are probably working over the weekend or just after showering or what have you, well, and you usually have the best ideas. Yeah, and of course, you know, engineering is such an enjoyable, it's such an enjoyable activity. I certainly do engineering both at work and at home. If you so, meet the right people. Well, that's right. You know, it's, uh, it's all about whether you meet the right people. Um, uh, so, so I think what we've seen is we've seen a level of industrial success, which is based a on it being a good platform. It turns out to be a suitable platform. And I think we talk a lot about how children are some of the most demanding consumers. If you can make a device that can withstand a child's bedroom, uh, it'll certainly withstand a factory, right? And so you see these people who've bought them, for, bought them for fun, bought them for their home lives, and then taking the same devices with them into work. And then over time, that's grown to be over half of our business now is what you would call industrial IoTs. Yeah. But it, again, it, again, it's fair to say that the RPI has so much power in 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 it in terms of flexibility, I/O lines, uh, ports, and extremely accessible. It's extremely accessible. Do you think that has uh, pros and cons both for the industry? Um, I well, I definitely think it has. I definitely think it has pros. Um, I think we've. I think to the extent there are cons, I think it's that we've struggled. Um, We've struggled certainly in the early years. We struggled to explain to people that this thing, which we had very much positioned as a toy, you come to our website, it's got cartoon robots on it, right? And yet we make a product which is more reliable than, than large numbers of devices which would describe themselves as industrial strength computers. Tell me about the cucumbers. I'll, I'll tell you about the cucumbers. So this cucumber, cucumber sorting is one of my favorite, you know, we have a lot of very serious examples of Raspberry Pi being used in industry. Um, the cucumber sorting example is my favorite frivolous example, but I think it illustrates a, a number of important points. Um, an engineer in Japan, whose parents run a cucumber farm, and who was able to use Raspberry Pi to build a machine for sorting uh, using Google TensorFlow as an AI system. He was able to build a Raspberry Pi based system that could do a preliminary sort of the cucumbers, which I believe the 23 batches, the, 23 <laughs> classes of Japanese spiny cucumber. Um, it's, it sounds frivolous, but it's an interesting example of how Raspberry Pi has unlocked a kind of a grassroots, a bottom-up grassroots approach to industrial automation. It, it is not, it's the other way around. Usually what we see with the industry, and the industry says, you, you should use yeah, that, this is the best product, that, you should use that. You, and Raspberry Pi demonstrates exactly the opposite. It demonstrates what's available and suggest that it's, it's, it has come into the industry on its own strength. Is that, I think that's a fair thing to say? Yeah, I think that's fair to say. This is a device which is uh, which first of all got the attention, not of the decision makers in organizations, but of the influencers, the doers, the people who are actually going to implement it. And they have then advocated for it within it. They have advocated, they've sold it up 
within their organization rather than having somebody at the top sell a solution down to the engineers. Evan, um, on behalf of my uh, esteemed colleagues who, colleagues who do uh, Magpie magazine both in uh, French, uh, Marilyn, and who do it in Dutch, is uh, Kuhn. Kun and Marilyn kindly send me some questions to ask yeah, to you. They are very afraid of you, okay, uh, but I'm not. So they're, they're not here. <laughs> so they're not here. Like, I don't like the questions. They're, they're not hidden. Know. So Kun uh, was I'll asking. Yeah. Angry message in the next okay. Time. Yes, yes, yes. And they will publish that, and okay. so we'll complete the whole circle. Um, Evan, listen. Uh, risk five. Ah. Risk V or yeah, risk it's five? Yeah, it's a Roman V. It's yeah, a Roman V. You should know that because you're from Cambridge. Yes, ah, so it's it, your. One of your co-founders, who's in the low risk, comes yes. from the low risk um, background. Yes. He's called Robert Mullins. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, is there a connection? What is happening with Risk Five and the RPI? Uh, nothing. Nothing. I mean, we are we are we are very happy arm customers. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that you know, I, I sometimes draw parallels between Raspberry Pi's approach and Arm's approach. I think we both organisations have been characterised by kind of a uh, uh, not wanting to take too large a slice mm -hmm. of the pie, if you will, not wanting okay. to take too large a slice of the, to create a lot of value, but not wanting to appropriate large amounts of that value. Um, obviously, the Arm ecosystem is this enormous, extremely vibrant place. Uh, we've benefited from shipping Arm. Uh, CPU cores. Yeah. We uh, we obviously we're currently shipping Cortex A53, which is an amazing core designed in Cambridge, um, and I, I I believe we will be shipping ARM cores for a very very long time to come. That's great. That's great to hear. Now there's uh, of, of course Christmas is coming up. Everybody's drawing up with Christmas designs and wish list. And here's the wish list from from Kuhn. RAM capacity up, please. <laughs> Evan up up some yeah okay. Yeah, uh, USB 3.0 when SATA when Evan. Uh, okay, so the, there is a fairly well understood wish list. I know that certainly two, probably two, along with more CPU performance, which is the, you know more CPU performance, faster network performance. These are the the kind of classic wish list for next generation Raspberry Pi. I think what I can say is we are aware of the wish list. Um, we are now in a place where I guess we have cleared out our pipeline. Uh, this autumn has been about clearing out our pipeline of unlaunched products. We ended up with quite a lot of products which got to 80, 90 percent complete and then haven't launched. We are very nearly clear of that and so really what I would say is our attention is now turning not to making a future Raspberry Pi but to at least doing the definition phase of looking at our wish list and seeing what fraction of it is achievable and obviously I think those two are probably pretty high on the list um, and then deciding what silicon platform we're a, we're a distance away from the next device right so deciding what silicon platform will allow us to deliver on the fraction of the wish list that we believe is achievable. What is happening going to happen uh, with the extensions, let's call them extensions, more RAM, SATA, USB. Will you be doing that in separate hardware chips, or will you be, as you said, looking for a an upgraded processor platform? What will be your choice, hardware or a power, more powerful processor? Well, I don't think we have a choice but to uh, revise the processor platform. Um, the, all the Raspberry Pi's did have been built on 40 nanometer chips. I think what we said when we launched uh, Raspberry Pi 3 mm -hmm. Plus mm -hmm. was that we'd come to the end of the road in terms of just simply how many 40 nanometer transistors you can afford to toggle in the power budget that you have available. You don't, you don't squeeze this complete SATA interface on that. Well, so we can't, well, in particular, we can't squeeze a larger CPU in there. So I think. Um, Whatever we do next will require new silicon. Um, it will require new silicon on a new process node if we wish to post a CPU performance increase. And while it's not on the wish list, I'm sure it's in people's minds. Um, and what that means is that's probably the opportunity to go and find a piece of silicon which will address some of that. It's so not likely that you'll see a sort of a um, shrapnel you know, large numbers of different pieces of silicon on the board simply because we can't do it within the target price structure. Okay. Fair, fair enough, that seems to go the way. We can't afford, very, we can't afford very many $1 SATA controller yeah. chips on the, uh, on the board. So. That brings us to Kuhn's final uh, point. Thank you very much, Kuhn, <laughs> for the questions. Uh, the power consumption issue, there has been issues, of course, with uh, people have been surprised, uh, perhaps a bit disappointed by or criticized Raspberry Pi for its power consumption. Are there any plans, uh, Evan, to go lower power, as the Americans say, lower yeah. power? Lower power. Um, the um, ultra low well, power. Yes. So, I, so um, I don't think that there is a plan to go ultra low power. So, for me, ultra low power means well, uh, single digit milliwatts. Um, the various architectural decisions we've made on the platform really don't admit don't admit of that kind of uh, that kind of scaling. Of course, you can take um, uh, you know Raspberry Pi. Um, 
the plus line, the three plus line, has much better thermal design than any device we've made before. You can run it harder for longer and have it stay cooler than any previous product. Um, ultimately, the solution is if you want the thing to consume, not to consume much power, you can always turn the clock down. Yep. And even at 600 megahertz, even at 300 megahertz, even at 100 megahertz, there's an awful lot of performance and also an awful lot of CPU grunt. In a People seem to forget that option, turn the clock down once it works, your application, even if it's under industrial, works cheerfully with a very much lower clock and much lower power consumption. Yeah. Okay, Ibn, thank you very much for the interview. That's it for the questions. You see, that's all. We did it. My real response will be in the next, will be hidden, encoded in the next magpie. Ah, so for, for your colleagues yeah, to uh, decode. The Dutch and our French readers can look forward to an Easter egg yeah. planted by Mr. Evan Upton uh, himself. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Enjoy the rest of the show. You too.